Hello again. Um, this one's a bit of a sidestep. It's just because I've been trying to fix a little bug and I used something different to help me fix it. So I thought, since it's a learning series, I should show you what I'm doing to fix the problems. That's, that's kind of the point. So I'm going to take 10 minutes out of developing the game to just show you a useful way, in this case at least, to check for a bug. And the bug, if we look at the game, if we play and watch the ships, let's say if you can find a ship somewhere that seems to be looping infinitely, maybe this guy. It's hard to tell, but he seems to just be going around one point all the time. And that's the problem I was working on. The ultimate result was that they don't turn fast enough to reach the goal, but we're going to look at a different way of fixing it. But to help me fix it, I, I drew lines from the ship to its target to see what it was doing. And drawing lines in Flash is actually quite useful. So in a new file, I'm just going to show you how to draw a line using code. And then I'm going to show you how I used it in the game to help with a little bug. So I've started a new file. Just going to click on the, the first keyframe, go to the actions. I've set it to black as well. The actual stage is black, so I can see the lines. And we're going to make use of the graphics property inside the movie clip, or in this case, the actual SWF itself which, if you remember, is just a movie clip. So we're going to access the graphics of this symbol. And to do that, we use the keyword graphics. So it's just graphics in lowercase. It'll go blue. Oops. And we'll um, start by clearing the graphics. So let's clear the graphics. There's nothing to clear at the moment, but it's it's useful to know that you can clear the graphics. So graphics.clear will get rid of any lines that you drew the last frame or something like that. If you drew them last click or something along those lines, what we'll do, we'll set it up so that when we click it draws a line from where we last clicked to where we have clicked. We'll set a line style, so we need to tell Flash how to draw these lines. So set a line style. Again we access the graphics, graphics line style it will suggest it to you and then we can see that we can provide uh, thickness color alpha and so on I'm just going to use the thickness and the color so two pixels and then a color in this format which is basically the same as the way they pop up here so this sequence of numbers and letters in my case I want solid white which is FF 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 so that will set a two pixel line, solid white. And then let's move the pen, so the, the graphical pen. Move the pen to the middle of the screen. And for that we use graphics.move2. And in this case we want stage.stage width over two, stage dot stage height over two. And that'll be the middle of the screen. So that's the graphics set up to begin with. Now let's add, um, add an event listener for a mouse click. So listen for a, for a click. And we'll do stage.add event listener just so we can click anywhere. Stage.add event listener mouse event.click. And let's say draw a line. Make the function. So, function draw a line responding to a mouse event. We've done this lots of times. And in here, we're going to draw a line to the current mouse position. So, again, we access the graphics, do graphics.line2, and we'll use mouse x and mouse y. Test it. See that there's nothing there to start with, but if I click, hopefully we get an error. What have I done? What does the error say? What have I done? What have I done? Uh, should be a mouse event, not a mouse. I don't want to save it. <laughs> so if we click now, we get lines to where we clicked. Quite useful. We could also just have 
drawn a shape entirely with code. Um, you might recognize this from, if you've looked at my channel much, there's a laser tutorial. That's pretty much what I did in that, except I had a glow filter on everything. If we quickly just amend it, so we'll do um, we'll draw a shape using code. I can show you the fill that you can do. So graphics dot line two, let's say 200, 200. Just going to copy the line, paste it a couple of times, change that to 200, 400, and then. I don't know, 400, 200, and then we'll go back to the middle. So, copy that. Graphics dot line 2 and paste the start position. So we started in the center, let's see what that looks like. We've got a triangle, whoop de doo Notice there was no fill on it. That's really the point of what I'm doing now. I've drawn a shape and we're going to fill it with a color. So before we start drawing the lines, if we come here just after the line style, if we set a fill colour, fl colour, so you do graphics dot begin fill and choose a colour. So I'm going to say, I don't know, let's make it up. Put six random numbers in, test it, and we get a green triangle. So it's filling the gaps between the lines. Now really that, that shouldn't work because you should tell it to end fill. That's good practice anyway. So graphics.endfill should go at the end of your lines. We got lucky that it worked anyway, but it's always best to have that to stop filling. So that's that's graphics in a nutshell. Let's go back to our game and put it into action in the level class. So I'm in my level class and I'm near the for loop that goes through all the ships. And what I'm going to do, just before the for loop starts, I'm going to clear the graphics and set a line style. So I'll do graphics.clear and graphics.line style. Set the thickness, we'll just go with one this time and solid white again, six Fs. Then inside the for loop, for every ship, we're going to move the pen to where the ship is and draw a line to the ship's target. So move the pen. I'm calling it a pen, I don't think that's the real name, I think it's just the draw head or something random. Move the pen to the ship's position. So we'll do uh, graphics.move2. Ships count, and we're going to get very bored of typing ships count, so let's make a variable for this instead. So I'm going to cut that there, and just before we start updating the ship and so on, I'm going to make a variable, call it sh, and we'll set it to be ships count. So anywhere we've used that now, we can just use sh instead. sh.update, sh.x, sh.y. And same down there, you could change them to just be sh if you wanted to. Just saves you time typing it out all the time. And then we want to draw a line from the, the ship's position to the ship's target. So sh.target.x. Target, if you remember, is a point saved inside the ship class. So here we go a point inside the ship. At the moment it's set to private which means it won't work so we have to change this to public for now. We can always come back and, and remove that later. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. So I've set that to public and I've saved the ship class. Go back to my level so we can now actually make use of this target. I'll do sh.target.y. Save that, make sure I've got the right FLA selected and test it. Start the game and we can see that the ships are drawing lines to where they're targeting. So we should be able to spot the problem now. If we see this, this ship up here, it seems to be exhibiting the problem. Yep. You can see that he's not getting close enough to his target point to generate a new target. Same with this guy, he's getting really close, just not close enough. And by drawing those lines, it, it gives you a, a visual representation of it, so it's much easier to see 
And now when we actually fix the problem, we'll be able to see that the solution's working as well. So let's let's do that. We go back to, let's say, the ship class and just adjust the logic a little bit. We could just put this distance up. So this hypotenuse is actually the distance that the, the ship is from its target. We could just put that up to something like 20 pixels, save the file and test it again. So now they don't have to get so close to the point. They've just got to be within 20. But you're still likely to get that problem on a, on a ship that's got a wide orbit around its point. Don't seem to have any of them here. Let's have a look. This one's. Yeah, there you go. See how he's missed his target. So we don't want them to do that. Now we could um, change the logic of how they turn. We could make them turn faster. We could make them slow down as they're turning. That'd help. But for now, I'm just going to give them a time limit. So I'm going to come to the top in the ship class and I'm going to add a new variable here. I'm going to make a private variable called time to target and I'll make it an integer. So we'll give the ship a, a limited number of, of frames to reach its target before it picks a new one. So in the constructor we'll, we'll set the time to target set it as zero And then in the update function, in this top line, if we do time to target typed properly, plus plus, so we're adding one to it every frame. And then down here we can say if the distance is less than 20 pixels or two vertical lines, or time to target is greater than let's say 200 frames, then it'll generate a new target and we'll set time to target back to zero. Test that, watch for any ships that look like the court in a full circle. This one up here, he's not going to get to that point, but watch, he'll give up soon. There we go, so he's picked a new target, and by having these lines we can see that that's actually working. Now 200 pixels is maybe a bit of a quick, yeah, so let's, let's put that up. Stick with 300 for now. Hopefully we'll get one that's stuck. This guy here didn't reach his target. Let's see if he gets it on the second swipe. No, but he should get fed up and pick a new target soon. So, fingers crossed, there we go. So after 300, pixel, 300 frames he got bored, picked a new target. Looks like he's fallen into the same trap again. Nope, he reached that one. Here we go, this guy. He's got no chance. He's not getting anywhere near it, so he's going to get fed up and oh, he's going to pick an equally bad one. But at least it's working. And without those lines, it'd be very hard to tell that it was. And that's all I wanted to show you, really. Just a little pointer. The whole point of the series is to um, be able to work with your own code and fix problems. So if I'm fixing a problem using something, it only makes sense that I show you how I did it. And there you go, we'll see you in the next video where hopefully we can uh, start blowing ships up or get the turret to die. Just start pushing the game to its final destination. I'll see you then.